hey, we're dealing with the ministry and the, the ministry and the office of a prophet. But in it, there are many, many components that we will be sharing that are relevant to you. Um, we just talked about the ministry and the office of an apostle. You see, what I'm trying to deal with, I'm trying to answer questions before they are asked by the grace of God. I'm also, by the, as the Spirit leads me, I'm, I'm dealing with the office, I'm dealing with its errors, I'm dealing with, its, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the myth all at the same time. So that's why if you peek, you see the flow. That at one point I'm saying this and another point I'm saying something that is counter to what people uh, believe or say. So that you have a, a balanced gospel. That you know what is good from what is not good. So that you're not confused. And like we started out, I said, if you're a member of this church, you shouldn't be confused. And therefore, you shouldn't be afraid when you come, ag when you come across a gift that is not operating quite like God wants it to operate. Because the signs are, sh the, uh, the signs are clear. He said, you shall know them by their fruit. If you don't see the fruit there, don't place your demand on it. Because the moment you place your demand on it, you're going to be manipulated. The moment you sense, and I'm not just talking about I don't agree with this. I'm talking about the scripture does not agree with this. Because there are some times when you do not agree with somebody whom God agrees with. Simply because of certain differences. That's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about understanding whether this is God or this is not God. And I say God is not the confuser. So, by the time you're prob probably in confusion thinking, is this God, is this not God? It's probably not God. Because God is not the author of confusion. Even with the men and the women of God. The moment you have a question, and it's not just something you have uh, made up. Uh, the moment you have a question, you're thinking, mm -mm, something in here does not read right. Remember, you also have the Spirit of God. So the moment you think, mm -mm, something in here does not read right, don't waste your time about it. Don't waste your time about it. Just find a way to exit that place. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, the office of a prophet. See, God is restoring the prophetic move in this day. And therefore, that means that God is anointing people in this area. Those that are called as prophets, they're beginning to receive recognition by the grace of God. And God is beginning to place anointings on them by the grace of God. And remember, when God is working, the enemy also begins to counterfeit. And the counterfeit is not what is 99% different from the real. A counterfeit is one that is 99% similar to the real. In other words, there are so many similarities except what is most vital. And sometimes what is most vital may not be the same. So I tell people, you do not know a demon by learning how many types of demons are there. You do not know a false prophet by learning how many types of false prophets are there. Because the devil can change tactics. But the truth remains the truth. The truth is objective. It's the same. It doesn't change. It doesn't shift. So that is why when you go to the central bank, the reason why those in the central bank just simply understand a fake currency is not because they try to learn how many types of fake currencies are there. It is because they are so acquainted with the real that if anything fake, anything that is other than the, the, the real comes their way, they, they, have no, they can observe, they can tell, and they know it because they are so used to the real. The fake may come so close to the real, but if you acquaint yourself with what is real, 
when you begin to understand who the Holy Spirit is and what his gifts are in truth, you will not be confused. You will know this is fake. You will know this is young. You will know this is proud. Okay? There, there are prophets who are, God is anointing them to be prophets. But because they are young in the office, they do not know how to navigate their way in it. The gift is there, but there is, the gift has not matured. That's why Paul told Timothy, do not give any office to a novice. See, that's why we don't just get anybody who hasn't gone through training and then we give them a position. We don't do that. Why? Because either you're young or you're not yet qualified. You must be tested. If your ministry has not been tested, your ministry cannot be trusted. And there has to be somebody to verify and say this one can be trusted. There has to be a John the Baptist introducing a Jesus. So, you don't just take off and introduce yourself and say, but you know, I have the anointing of God. Such was a young man here. We had a young man here who was trying to do ministry by force. You know, he began to gather people and collect them. You know, some of you ladies, I, I know that you were victim to, to his, you know, uh, whatever he was doing. You know, after service, he would gather people around and he would begin to prophesy to them or, or tell them those were not prophecies. Those were familiar spirits. Okay, because nobody verified his ministry. Nobody introduced him. Nobody, he didn't learn under anybody. So he wasn't qualified to, to speak to you. So whatever he said, it is not of God. And I'm not saying that to try and put anybody down. Uh, but if I could say a little bit more uh, there are issues and uh, we are dealing with that as, 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 as the ministry leaders we are dealing with that so there has to be somebody to bring you up to speed to introduce you to bring you to where you're supposed to be God's system will always be that there was Eli to introduce Samuel there was Samuel to introduce Saul Samuel to introduce a David there has to be you must have gone through some sort of teaching training there was an Elijah to introduce an Elisha you can't just come up from nowhere and say but God has also anointed me God may have anointed you but then there is the system of God that somebody somebody who is qualified by the grace of God So you, you don't just start going around, you know, saying anything and everything. Because when we talk about the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry, you can highly build people's lives if you're walking in that ministry the right way. And you could destroy people's lives. If you just take off with one piece of information and then you run with it. And you know nothing about nothing. Sit down and learn. After you have learned, you will be able to move. There are people right now in this congregation that are not necessarily part of the prophet, uh, part of the pastoral team that I can begin to trust. Why? Because we've seen their progress. That they can begin to be trusted. If they gave a word, it's not far from the truth. Because they have proved themselves faithful. Hello? That is the nature of God everywhere. You don't just go up in your, in your office and you say, no, it was me supposed to be promoted. How could you promote so and so? There is protocol. There is leadership. If you think it was unfair, go back to God. I believe if you're walking with God, your position will not be given to anybody. And if it does, you will get it back. So work. Because that's the one thing that they will not take from you. Work. 
Do your part. And the next level will be waiting for you. Amen. So who is a prophet? Let me say that a prophet is a ministry. It's a ministry gift that is given to the church. We saw that in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Uh, all the way we have been talking about that. You know. Uh, um, seriously. So the prophet is one of the fivefold ministry offices that was given for the same reason. All the fivefold ministry operate differently, but they were all given for the same reason. You know, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And he gave the reason as to why, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. That is why he gave the fivefold ministry, for that reason. For that reason, you know. And, and he goes on to say why, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, you see, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of of Christ. So a prophet is one of the fivefold ministry gifts that has been given uh, to the body of Christ by God. And uh, nobody can make himself a prophet. No amount of praying, no amount of laying on of hands or feet or pouring on of oil or water or whatever it is can make you a prophet if God has not called you to be a prophet. Now, not everybody is called to be a prophet, though there are people that God has called to be prophets. So the ministry and the office of a prophet exists in this day. And like I said, God is restoring the prophetic, which means we ought to pay attention to the prophetic ministry because it will greatly help us to have a clear understanding and a proper understanding of the prophetic ministry. Why? Because I cannot guarantee that you're not going to encounter a true prophet or a false prophet. Somewhere there, you will encounter one of them. Uh, we pray that you encounter the true prophet. Uh, but in the event that you encounter one who acts like a monkey or acts funny, understand, okay? Understand that uh, this is not the way of God, okay? The way of God is different. So this is what you need to be clear about because if you don't you see the prophetic office comes with power that even the person who is false could have actually been true it is that they have the gift but it is the wrong spirit using the gift but the gift is there but the wrong spirit is using that gift and so what is manifesting is wrong but the, the gift was given by God all good and perfect gifts come from God all gifts come from God. So you encounter the false ones. The, the gift was given by God, but the operation, they yielded themselves to familiar spirits. And therefore, they're being used by familiar spirits. So the prophetic office comes with power. It comes with anointing. It comes with grace. Words are powerful, yet words spoken under the prophetic are even more powerful. Hello? Are we together? So the prophet, being one of the fivefold gifts, he's anointed by God, called by God, and divinely equipped by God to fulfill a function in the body of Christ. A prophet fulfills the same function, just in a different way. He operates in a different way, but fulfills the same function to the body of Christ. So the primary office of the, the primary purpose of the prophet as well is not only to do that which God said in Ephesians chapter 4 but also to exalt Jesus the prophet was not anointed to exalt himself even though Paul said I magnify my ministry but the pro his, his number one his ultimate is not to glorify himself it is to glorify Jesus Revelation chapter 19 verse 10, it says, for the spirit of prophecy is the testimony, for, for the testimony of, of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Revelation 19 10, it says, and I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said unto me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of the brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. 
worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now we'll talk about that. But the office of a prophet carries the spirit of prophecy as well. And the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Of course, this, is, this was a, a, a vision that, an encounter that John had where he saw the angel in his glory and he wanted to worship the angel. And the angel said, no, see to it that you do not worship me. So this is why we are not called to worship men. We honor men. We respect men. But we don't worship them. Because the angel, in all his glory, he said, see to it that you don't do this. Because I am of your fellow servants. He said, worship Jesus. If you go anywhere and the man is being exalted more than the Christ, I think there is a bit of an issue there. I think there's a bit of an issue there. He said the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We'll get back to that. So the prophet ought to exalt the working and the ministry of Jesus. As he does that, the Lord will anoint him and the Lord will put him out to be visual. And obviously, yes, the Lord said, I will make your name great. That is generally for every believer, but also specifically for those whom God sends. That yes, God will make his name great, but that great name is not to be worshipped. The reason why God gives him a great name is because he is um, uh, representing a great God. But God doesn't send him out to go and solicit for worshippers to worship the man but rather for the man to focus every eye to Jesus to focus every eye through the word of God to God by the spirit of God because the Bible says no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the spirit of God so there has to be an acceptance that Jesus is Lord over there We need to get back to the foundation where Jesus Christ is Lord and not a man somewhere. Paul goes to a city when they saw what God was doing through them. They tried to worship them. They tore their clothes and said, no, 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 no. Don't do that. That's blasphemy. Wow. Today's men love to be worshipped. Today's uh, prophets and apostles and, and evangelists and whoever, they love to receive worship. That's not the way of God. And I'm saying, honor the men. Honor the men. That's different from worship. We honor God, we honor men, because he said, honor all men. And honor them that preach the gospel to you. That you are to honor. And don't take on an arrogant position and say, oh, you know, pastor said we shouldn't worship. You shouldn't worship the man, but honor the man. Honor the anointing upon the man. Glory to God. Are we together? The primary responsibility of the prophet as well is to preach and to teach the word. Now I know that there are many who disregard that and say no, that's not true. It is to preach and to teach the word because that exactly, if you go back to Ephesians chapter 4 and we'll, I'll prove to you other scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4, it says uh, they're supposed to equip the body of Christ. To equip it with the word of God. To equip it by the spirit of God. Now prophesying is a big part of the prophet's ministry and office. Yeah. They equip the saints for the work of ministry. Prophesying is a big part of the ministry of the prophet. But it's not the only part. I have seen people who come and from beginning to end, they just prophesy. From January to December, they never teach the word of God. Now, error is very close to such. And in all cases, I have seen them 
Now, somebody else may have a different testimony. But in all cases, I have seen them. These people had potential. They had grace. They had the anointing. But they all lost it as I speak right now. Because you can't just prophesy without teaching people the word of God. People need to be grounded in what God has said. So that when God speaks, it makes sense. So that when they go out, they have a foundation to stand. And it is the word of God that grounds. That's why Paul said, I commend you unto God and to the word of his grace. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So the word of God is still relevant today for our apostles, our prophets, our evangelists, our pastors, and our teachers. Now obviously when a, when, when a prophet teaches or preaches, it is not the same as a teacher. Because the prophet, he preaches and teaches under divine inspiration. And we'll talk about that. So, understand that Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 and uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. 1 Timothy 2 7, Paul actually um, talks, let's, let's read it so that you know what it says. I know what it says, but let's read it. For, for which I was appointed a preacher. He says, I was appointed a preacher. Paul is an apostle and a prophet, but he says, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and in truth. So he's a preacher and a teacher. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. For which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. So he's, he's, he's appointed as a preacher and a teacher. That means he meddles in the word of God. Obviously by the spirit of God. Amen. Prophets in the New Testament, we'll get to the definition. Prophets in the New Testament are different from prophets in the Old Testament. Even though uh, there, there are many similarities as well. In the Old Testament, there were three anointings or three ministries glory to god there are three anointings that is the office of the king the office of the priest and the office of the prophet the king did the administrative uh, duties of the realm the priest did the ceremonial uh, uh, practices of the realm in the temple and the prophet was the one the mouthpiece he was the speaker he was the one that was sent by god you know, the priest comes from among the people. The prophet comes from God. In other words, the prophet was always sent by God to represent God to the people. As the priest was anointed by God to represent the people to God. So, obviously, there are many similarities between the two the prophet in the old testament and the prophet in the new testament but also the prophet in the new testament has different dimensions for instance in the old testament the people were mostly led by their prophets the kings were mostly led by their prophets in the new testament we're not led by the prophet we're led by the holy spirit that does not in any way reduce the office of the prophet but for you to understand that you are not to be led by the prophet. You're not to be led by the pastor. You're not to be led by the apostle. In that way. Because the fivefold ministry does not replace God. The fivefold ministry enhances the ministry of God in your life. They quicken the ministry of God in your life. So. The reason why I'm saying it is because some people in the body of Christ gave up their spiritual right to be led by the Holy Spirit. And they have relinquished it to a man to be led by that man or woman. That is not 
what the New Testament prophet is supposed to do. He does not replace the Holy Spirit. He functions by the Holy Spirit. He does not replace Jesus. He does not replace God. He functions by God. The authority he has was given to him by Jesus Christ. And yet it is still true that God will hardly do things if he has not told the prophet. Now that doesn't mean you don't know those things. But he will still tell the prophet to emphasize, to emphasize it. As he says, the Lord will do nothing without revealing it to his servants, the prophets. Because they are assignments that is given unto the prophetic ministry. So that by the speaking of their word and releasing a certain grace, certain things will not happen in your life, even, as, even if you pray, until God sends a man to speak. Jesus being the son of God still needed to be baptized by John the Baptist. God gave, placed men to be activators, to be catalysts of the grace that he has put upon other men. He has specifically given them an anointing, a grace, an enablement, an ability, a supernatural ability uh, to divinely move you to your next level. To stir up what is on the inside of you. Certain doors don't open until God sends a man to say, this door is opening. Certain things don't fall off until a visitation from God happens through another man. Yes. So you are in no way absolutely to disrespect the officers. What you need to do is discern. Is this of God? Is this not of God? And then move on from there. You find out this is of God, then partake of what God is saying through his servant. Glory to God. So, the same way Jesus operated as Paul said, Jesus stood up in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. What did he say? He entered into the temple. There was given unto him the scrolls of the, from the book of Isaiah. He found the place which was written, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to bind the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. To proclaim liberty to the, to the captive to, and to the recovery side to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. Even Jesus said the spirit has anointed him to preach. And there are places where Jesus went preaching and teaching. Preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom. He didn't go everywhere saying stand up, that saith the Lord. Stand up, that saith the Lord. Stand up, you in blue, stand up, that saith the Lord. Stand up, you can essentially do that by the spirit of God, but you need to teach so that people are established. And the teaching and the preaching under the prophetic anointing can actually bring deliverance because it says he has anointed me to teach, he has, to, he has, to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to preach the gospel to the poor. To set at liberty the bruised. In other words, as the word is going forth, the state of the poor begin to change. As the word is going forth, the state of the brokenhearted begin to change. The state of the blind begin to change. It's not just physical, uh, physical blindness, but even spiritual blindness. So the word comes out with power. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that you need to be founded in the word. You need to be strong in the word. Nothing can take the place of the word. Nothing can replace God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. In Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 9 verse 35... It said of Jesus, he went through the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now, it is very consistent that what, what Paul did, what Jesus did, it, it, you know, and what the apostles did, it, it, it's very consistent. They went to preach, teach, preach, teach, teach, preach, teach, preach. Yeah? 
There is. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Teaching and preaching. Oh, preaching and teaching. So the fivefold ministry in their, in their pursuit to build the body of Christ have a responsibility to be faithful to the word of God and to minister that word to the people of God. The foundation of what the church is is laid in these ministries through the word of God. The ministry of the apostle the ministry of the prophet, but there has to be the word of God. There has to be the word of God. Amen. Amen. To preach simply means to proclaim. To teach means to expound or to explain. Because this is what matures the saints. It equips them for service. The saints are supposed to be matured and equipped for service. <clears throat> and as apostles and prophets, our responsibility is to the word of God. And the will of God, which is his word still. Amen. Amen. So, though prophets don't just teach like the teacher. Because there's the office of the teacher. Who studies the word of God. And understands that word and comes and explains certain things that are difficult for people to understand. He makes logical sense. He goes into your head, takes you to a journey through the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Explaining and expounding something, trying to get you to arrive to a place of understanding. Still a ministry of the Holy Spirit. The, preach, the teacher is given more to the studying of the word. The prophet should study the word, but is given more to prayer. Because his, what, his, what he speaks comes by divine inspiration. It is by the, by, by, the, by the inspired word of the moment. In other words, it comes out as thus saith the Lord. This is what the Lord is saying. He's fresh, therefore he needs to be acquainted with the place of prayer and acquainted with the place of the word. Amen. Amen. So the prophet, uh, that word prophet is from the Greek word nabi. Oh, you thought that was a Swahili word. It's a Greek word. The word nabi simply means to bubble forth. It's like chem chem zamadi, like water bubbling forth, something bubbling forth. So it, it's simp that, that's what nabi means, to bubble forth. You know? So that means that when the, the prophet is flowing and under the Holy Spirit, he bubbles forth. In other words, he didn't plan to say what he says. He didn't plan to operate the way he operated. He just comes and then the spirit of God comes upon him. Either the Lord told him prior or the Lord will begin to tell him then, but he will begin to flow, bubble forth. When he looks at you, he sees what God is saying. When he looks at you, he sees what thus saith the Lord. He begins to bubble forth, bubble forth. Speak it as, being, as, as it is released by the Spirit of God. It is, it's bubbling from a certain fountain. The fountain being the Holy Ghost. He releases the waters. And then the prophet breaks forth and preaches and teaches and bubbles forth and prophesies. Glory to God. What the Lord does is he puts his word in the man's mouth or in the woman's mouth. If you... Uh, look at Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 where he says I'll put my word in your mouth and then also Isaiah 51 verse 16 he also says the same thing I'll put my word in your mouth. Deuteronomy 18, 18 he says the same thing I'll put my word in your mouth. Yeah. I'll put my word in your mouth so that you can speak it so that you can divinely inspired 
to speak or to say it. Um, let's look at Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 20 and 21. Let's begin from verse 19. And so we have... Uh, okay, I'm used to the King James, but that, uh, that's okay. And so we have... We have a more sure word of prophecy. I like that. I like that phrase there, the, a more sure word of prophecy. And so we have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn, until the day star rise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man. Prophecy did not come by the will of man. It is not a man trying to conjure. It is not a man trying to uh, 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 find the right words to say. It is not a man uh, trying to come up with a proverb or come up with something. No. True prophecy, he says, it came not in time old, in old time, by the will of man. In other words, man has his will, but this is not the will of man. It is being spoken through the man, but it is not from the man. For, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it was the Holy Spirit moving these people, Oh, he's not going to move you by holding you and say, move. That's not what it is. You will, you will, you will, there will be a flow on the inside, a bubbling forth. You know, you will come up to a place where you, this, well, these are the only possible words that will come out of your mouth. In other words, God is working on the inside of you to will and to do of his good pleasure. And then you respond by being sensitive to what he's saying, what you are sensing on the inside. And then you open your mouth as the bubble is happening in your spirit. And then you release them. Holy man spoke forth. It requires a lifestyle. You can basically operate a gift without character. However, in the long by and by, it's possible that you lose it. Because character is what sustains the gift. Character, the lack of character will not take the gift away. For the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. They are without repentance. God will not take the gift somebody's unfaithfulness will eventually take the gift. But God will not take the gift. But he says, holy men prophesied as they were moved. Holy men spoke as they were moved. Holy men, there was a lifestyle to them. They were holy. A word which has far been divorced from the prophets of today. He said, holy men. And he didn't change and say, oh, we are upgrading. They can just do anything they want. Huh? I don't like the stories that are being told about the prophets. And I'm not talking about the rumors. Leave the rumors. The ones with evidence. And it is not like we're trying to, you know, go after. No, 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 no. We don't, speak, we don't speak against the men of God. God will deal with them because we're not the ones who called them. When they error, the one who called them will deal with them himself. So we don't make it our business to meddle in other people's businesses. However, for the purpose of learning, for the presentation, he said holy men. That simply means they had a certain lifestyle. My question is what happened? Why is it that the great gift 
no longer respond to holiness. Hello. These men had a lifestyle. They were moved. They spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. But you can underline that word. They spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That means when people prophesy, there is an outside influence that, is, that may be operating from the inside. I don't know. Does that make sense? The Holy Spirit was moving these people to speak. So if it's not of God, it's not the Spirit of God, there is a force in them that's moving them. But we who are of God, we must be moved by the Holy Spirit. Hello? So the, the prophet speaks under divine inspiration what the Lord is saying. The New Testament prophet still comes from the Lord. He's anointed and appointed by God to speak life to the sons of men. The prophet has depth. He speaks deeper than just somebody with the gift. The prophet has the gift as well, but he speaks deeper. He speaks from a place of revelation. He speaks from a place of vision. That his spiritual eyes and his spiritual ears and his spiritual senses are developed to hear what God is saying for the moment. And so he can navigate, go into the past, come into the now, go into the future to correct, rebuke, instruct, teach, reveal something in the heart of God that God wants to make known to his people. So yes, God will still use the man to reveal things. That's different from using the man to lead the people. The people, it is your spiritual responsibility to develop your spirit, your, your, your spirit man to be led by the Holy Spirit. In other words, you should know how the Spirit of God operates. A believer should come to a place where he understands how God is leading him and where God is leading him or her. To the point that even when the prophet comes, let him come with a word of confirmation and throw more light into the situation. And you respond to the word. But certain things are, are there for, to, to, to just bring confirmation that the man who is talking is appointed by God and he knows what he's saying. For instance, when the Lord reveals to somebody who doesn't know you, your address and your name. Now, to, because you know the man, you're sure the man doesn't know your address and your name, then the message he's giving next is qualified by what he said that you knew he didn't know. Or he says things that you know nobody knew. And he said it just to confirm to you that this that you know in your spirit is actually the Lord leading you. It is therefore not to be used as a superior thing. Oh, you're superior. Because, hey, don't you know your address? Don't you know your name? You do know your name. You do know your address. But it, for the purpose that what he's going to say next can be qualified to, so you know that it is the truth. The word from God. It is not to get you in a place where you're trapped in a situation to begin to worship the man. Receive the word. Honor the man. Give glory to God. Because the prophecy did not come by that man. It came through that man, but not by that man. It came from the Holy Ghost. So, he has the same Holy Spirit that you have. And by the way, there are no two Holy Spirits. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13, I believe. Second Corinthians should be. Just to prove a point to you. 
Oh my God, the time is way up. Second Corinthians. We having the same spirit of faith, the same Holy Spirit, the same spirit of faith as who? As Jesus. Same spirit of faith. We having the same spirit of faith according to as it is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, therefore I've spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. The same way Jesus operated, the same way we operate, the same spirit of faith, the same spirit, the same Holy Spirit. There are no two Holy Spirits, one for the prophet and one for the rest of the people. It's the same Holy Spirit that every believer has. Which means what the believer, what the prophet, what the, what the spirit of God is able to tell the prophet, the spirit of God is able to tell the believer. So the believer ought to have an understanding of who the Holy Spirit is, how he operates and how he operates in their lives. Even how he operates through the life of the prophet. So that when the prophet comes to you, it is no strange thing. You already know this is a man God uses and therefore he will speak. And you'll speak a word from God. And you have the same Holy Spirit that will confirm to you that what he's saying is by, the, is by me. Yes. People lose themselves. Oh my God. Then they, they, they cry, they fall. They're not even hearing anymore what, the, what is being said. When a person is prophesying to you, listen to the word. Yes. Listen to the word. Now, I, I don't like it when I prophesy on people and then they come and say, what, what did the Lord say? I say what I say and I move on. I move on. It wasn't my word. It was not my word. It was your word. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. Most part I do remember. But it's not my responsibility to hear on your behalf. I heard the Lord on your behalf. Now I have vocalized it, spoken it, and you still want me to tell you what the Lord said stand still have spiritual stamina hear what is being said receive it if it's from the Lord give glory to God good preaching glory to God hello yeah because some people the moment you start prophesying to them off there okay and then they had nothing then they're like, oh, wee. I didn't even hear anything. What did he say? <laughs> the reason why the gift is vocalized is so your ears can be attentive yeah. to hear what's being said. Yeah. So be alert. Be attentive. Hear what is being said. Just receiving any spirit that comes your way. Mm. Because there was power. Mm. Yeah, it could be a foreign power. So be alert. Oh, I like it when I prophesy and the power is flying everywhere and all that. But I need you to have the spirit, strong spiritual stamina to receive what God is saying. Hear and receive. Because the moment you ask someone else, you see, your, that word was tailor-made for you. Yes. Certain times the details in there are yours. The moment you try to get them Kalimani, they will, they will give you another, you know, a, something similar and the meaning will be lost. And you will not have a way of standing and saying, God said this to me. Do you know when reported speech is given in the second person, it's different from what the first person said. Are we together? Hear the word for yourself. And then confirm in your spirit. If it's of God, then it's of God. If it's not, then leave it there. No need for you to cry, oh my God. Uh, no, how could this, oh my God. Be mature. You know the power you have as a believer. Huh? You, you're going to find some people who will give you crazy words. I was there when somebody came and told me this is your, I was in form six. I'm just done with, at that time, do you, do you know who I am? At that time, my only, my only focus was to pray in tongues and to read my Bible. I was not thinking, imagining, assuming, nothing, no woman in my world, nothing like that. Somebody comes and says now, this lady the Lord just spoke to me is your wife. I knew in my spirit 
It was going to take me a while before I get to wife part. I knew. So he's like, no, you should take that word. It's your word. In, I kept quiet for respect sake. But in my spirit, I was like, no, that's not my word. And as you can see, that was in the other country, the other side. As you can see, my wife is in this country, this side. Huh? So imagine if I confused myself and said, oh my God. Receive it. Eh? Do you get my point? So I'm not going to guarantee you that you know, nobody will come and speak to you something that, that you need to be mature enough to have the word of God in you so that when somebody speaks, you know, you don't act out in arrogance, but you understand this is God, this is God. Then you take it. You take your word. You receive it. And you start waiting on the Lord. Because again, remember something. People love to receive prophecy. And, and I'll tell you why they do. Uh, we're just out of time today. I'll tell you why they do. It's a good reason. But you know, do you know something? Do you know that the day a prophetic word lands on you is the day responsibility to keep that word has also landed on you. You become keeper of that word. And that means you're supposed to wait on God until that word come to pass. So if you say, you go back, you say, they prophesied on me, but how come I've not seen it? It looks like people have an addiction to receive prophecies, but they never do anything about them. So we never see fulfillment of that word coming to pass. There are people who have a book. In fact, they're almost writing a whole Bible of prophecy. And then you find one guy who just has one prophecy. Obviously, Jesus had a couple of prophecies spoken about him, and it was written, documented. But he lived every one of them. Those that he has not yet lived, he's about to leave them. For instance, Jesus is about to come back. He will come back. He promised and he will come back. Glory to God. So when you have a prophecy and you know this is my word and this is God who spoke. Now, the responsibility is not mine. It's not the pastors, not the prophets. The responsibility is yours. And I'm telling you, when you receive a prophetic word, every demonic entity, you had it, the devil had it. Every will try to come against that word. They tried to come against the word on Jesus. That The day Je when Jesus was born, kids died because they, the Bible says, and Rachel and her children were crying. Children were, were, were slaughtered and they died because they were trying to kill the Jesus before he gets to his prophetic word. The other day, just the other day, just the other day, they got him, put him on the cliff. They wanted to throw him over and he just moved through them. That was just the other day in Jerusalem. Just the other day. Huh? All that, and the Bible says, and the devil left him for a while. In other words, the devil said, I'll be back. <laughs> so some of you are going through challenges because of the prophetic word upon you and because you don't know it you're, you're thinking I'm stressed you know it's, it's bad life is I don't know I'm tired I'm blah blah you don't understand that the enemy wants to frustrate the prophetic word over your life so you give up Reach. Reach. that word over you might be attracting mm. battles so if you just want to receive prophecies and you don't have a prayer life, shalekaya, matele bahaye sotolaba, you will become a prayer request every time. Issues, pastor, I have issues. Help me pray for me. And then, but the pastor prayed for me and nothing happened. You were supposed to understand what it means to take what is yours and say, I claim it back in the name of Jesus. Every prophetic word upon me, I take it in the name of Jesus. It will come to pass. It will manifest in the name of Jesus. I walk in my prophetic word. Sunday. God, I thank you because the heavens are open. Things will begin to happen in the name of Jesus. I walk in a new dimension of power. 
power in a new dimension of glory. Hey, the door is open for me. I have favor on my life. I'm getting through. I bind every strategic plan of the devil. I, 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 I scatter their plans in the name of Jesus. Everything the enemy tries to do is broken right now by the power of God in the name of Jesus. I have the Holy Ghost on the inside of me and I lift up my hands and give glory to you. you you've got to have a prayer life. It's not going to come because, you know, I received the word. I received the word. I wonder when it's going to come. You keep wondering. Keep wondering. You have to do something. This life is a life that is, it's a life of engagement. There's a devil out there and he's a real devil. And I'm telling you, he's not just sitting. He's planning and strategizing on how to destroy the grace of God upon your life. You need to align yourself with the power of God, with the word of God, with the will of God. That's why God reveals his word. So you can stand by that word and say, I am going through. The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist, the prophet, until today, the the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You've got to take it by force. The force of the Holy Ghost has to be upon you. He said, this is my territory. This is my city. This is my nation. This is my place. I operate here. I prosper here. I succeed here. I am higher. I am above only and not beneath. I am the head and not the tail. The, you've, my God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've got to have something. You've got to have it. You just come to church thinking, you know, the pastor is going to look at you, look at you feeling sorry and pity you and say, oh my God, you are such a small one. Oh my God, may God make you bigger. I am telling you as small as you are, the Goliath of your destiny will rise. You may be as small as a David, but I want you to understand if the Goliath arises, you need to pick up yourself and say, you come against me with a spear and a shield and a sword. I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God whom you have defied. This day you're going to come down. That's confidence in the Lord. You're going to come down. You're going to come down. You need to tell some people they're going to come down. You need to tell some things they're going to come down. You need to know what needs to come down. That's why the Bible says, I'm above only. That, there is no other place. I'm above only. I don't go down. I don't go under. I don't faint. I don't fall. Discouragement is not part of me. Weariness is not part of me. I will, you, the devil, you will not wear me out. I will stand until you are worn out. Glory to God. Amen. I will be committed to what God has said. Some of you are wondering, the family is going through all sorts of things. What's happening? There's an attack. That's what's happening. There's an attack. And you're waiting for someone from, to come from somewhere. Zimbabwe, Zambia, I don't know where. The devil has no time to wait for those. You've got to take up, suffer the violence, and take it by force. Glory to God. You stay there. Oh, oh, you're very gifted. Oh, thank you. But you're not moving. You say, I'm, but I'm not moving. Why, why are you not moving? You're supposed to be on the move. Why are you not moving? Something is blocking your way. You've got to take it out. Take it out. Take it out. God will send a helper if you can begin to take it out. The Bible says the just shall walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. You walk towards your destiny. You walk towards the thing that God has told you about. There will always be resistance in the direction that God has told you. It might actually be, e be easier for somebody else. That's not the direction. God, but the moment that's your direction. And God tells you go back to school. And there is everything that is saying no school for you. And you're seeing everybody graduating, graduating. No school for you. And you, you must raise the standard to go back to school. Hey, shalababa. And the Lord says, I have blessed you. To become a kingdom investor. A kingdom financer. And then you. The very you whom the, the prophet looked up and said. There's a billionaire here. There's a millionaire here. 
and then you can't even transport yourself from there to the next desk. You're thinking, but I don't even have 200 shillings to get. You must stand up and begin to fight your word until that word comes to pass. You must go and study financial literacy. You must go and pray in the Holy Ghost. You must ask God, how do you want me to prosper? Where is it coming? How is it coming? Ask God to give you the detailed plan. You must know how to break the devil, the, 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 the power of the enemy that is coming against you. You must know how to fight. If we have a church that is full of satisfied people, they just come to church and say, oh, our pastor is quite a good pastor. Our prophet is quite a good one. Oh, it's not, it's not going to work that way. We need a praying church. We need a praying church because the church is constantly under attack. We need a praying a, a congregation. We need members who are prayerful. Church prayer meetings are empty. And people are crying. I am under attack. When did you last go to the church prayer meeting? Do you even know the direction where it takes place? <laughs> Believe me. The <laughs> huh? You have excuses every time. Prayer comes Friday. You have an excuse. Arusi, Arusi, Arusi send off whatever everywhere believe me i want you to watch those who stay in the prayer chamber please just take write their names down write their names down and watch them give them a little bit of time and see what god will god will do in and through their lives you see the ones who are going for the for the prayer meetings and the ones who are committed to prayer tomorrow you will begin to go to them because today they are going to the lord Tomorrow, you'll begin to say, can I please have your, your phone number? Can, 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 can I have an appointment with you? Why? Did he not say, you ought not to faint in prayer? Man always ought to pray and not to faint. You're supposed to be dreaming angels and Jesus. You... <laughs> Are dreaming rats? You're dreaming I don't know what? You, you know, you're being chased all the time. You're falling. No. No. A prayerless life. A prayerless life with a prophetic word on it will attract trouble. You have a powerful prophetic word and you're prayerless. The devil took note. Because he knows if you stay in your place and that prophecy come to, fu be to fulfillment, you're going to be a terror to him. So he will fight the word. Hey, and the man said, you'll be married by next year. And, and you're like, he, didn't he say, the summer has come, the winter, we're still not saved. The Lord had told them you'll be saved, but they are not saved as yet. You fight for your word. You fight for your word. The Bible says Joseph waited until Psalms 105, verse, verse 20, I believe. Psalms 105, verse 20. He said he waited. He waited. It's not the dormant waiting of ah, banana, subiri, banana. It is the active waiting of prayer. Huh? He waited. He's, he was in chains and fetters. But he waited until the day his word came to pass. That means the man knew the art of prayer. Yeah. He knew. The, he knew. He understood the grace to pray. There are two good times to pray. Two good times. Number one, when you feel like it. And number two, when you don't feel like it. Hello. You better engage another gear because there are things that God will do because you prayed that he won't do if you don't pray the things that are only accessed in the realm of prayer 
Strongholds are not going to just break off you. Oh, you know, it's just break. It's, they're not going to break off you just like that. You've got to engage. Amen. Amen. Now, I just have to stop because of the interest of time. I've tried for today. We will try again next week. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let us rise on our feet.